Hi folks, welcome again to the Saber Zone, the video on the channel that always discusses what you had to say. Let's get into it. I found another one that I clipped out and I figure oh, I'm going to throw one more video in there before I uh, get all these videos uploaded for you guys. All right, here comes the clip. Here we go. And a shout out goes to Dave V. The biggest difference in the team now and two to three months ago is just their general demeanor. On the ice and on the bench. They're engaged now. They care. Want to know what I think the catalyst for that change is? And it lines up. Number 89. Tuck has been a breath of fresh air. His trade companion has been great too. Krebs just looks like he loves being here and being on the ice. Kevin Adams knocked it out of the park on that trade. And you got it, Dave. Absolutely. Without a doubt, Kevin Adams, we had to be patient. It was frustrating. And um, how many damn videos did I make about potential <laughs> trades? I came close on the Vegas, eh? I did come close. I, I think I came a player away instead of a, another draft or something. I, I know I had Krebs Tuck as part of what I thought we would get. Because I couldn't picture that deal going through at Vegas under no conditions if Krebs was not involved in that deal. It wasn't enough, just Tuck. So they, they, he made it happen. And uh, we swindled them. Yes. <laughs> we, I, they, look, Jack's playing okay over there. But they're going to be dealing with kind of a head case now. This is the problem. They're going to be dealing with a guy that's not a very team-friendly guy. You know, I never thought he was, to be honest. It's, you know... I never cared much for his demeanor, Jack Eichel. You know, I, I, I mean, I like I liked the fact he got involved in the, you know, and uh, outside stuff. But when you're a high-profile guy, you got no choice but to get involved with stuff like that anyway, you know. And he, um, he, he had to be moved. We had to get Jack out of town ASAP because the, the drama was never going to stop. So we had to move him. And getting uh, Alex Tuck, yes, has worked out better, Dave, than I even imagined in the beginning. I just knew we we're getting a power forward, and I was good with that. And I always liked Tuck, what I seen of him, you know. And, you know, it's been a, a real blessing in disguise, all the drama and all the crap that we had to worry. And, you know, Sabres fans, I felt bad for Sabres fans that, that felt we can't lose Jack Eichel. Like, I felt bad for those fans. It's like... Wow, he has you guys thinking his way, you know, like, God, no. I knew we had to move him. I, I wanted him out, I would say, honestly, guys, about three years ago. About then. After he had that great start, okay, that year, I wanted him moved right there. Right there. I knew that was when we could peek out the cash because the league is so dumb. They only look at what's happening in the now it's not like before years ago. It was a little different that way. Now, if you had a great year, oh, God, no, we can't trade him. It'd be like us saying right now we can't trade Olofsson. Of course we could. Absolutely we could. We'll get more for him now than we would a month ago, right? Of course we could. So we have to see what our options are at the end of the year. My guess is Olofsson's part of the plans anyway. He is. Even if he didn't snap out of this, I think he was in Adam's plans with this team. And... You know, some adjusting might help if you had a guy like Mike Pekka behind him saying, listen, you got to finish your check. You let you skated right by that and you just let it be like, you know, we need stuff like that going on behind the bench in their ears constantly behind them and coaching them and telling them and, and getting this team set in the right direction. And a guy like Tuck is such an example of a guy that was just thrilled he was welcomed the way he was. He was just welcomed. That's all he cared, you know? So it's easy for him, I think, to fit in. And I think it's going to be easy for anybody else to fit in that we get or acquire or trade for or, you know, we make it easy. I don't know what happened with the whole Robert Haig thing, guys. I really don't. Like, you heard him say he has no friends. I have no friends. Like, if he had that kind of attitude, I'm surprised because he seemed like he got along here. He, it, I never seen any, heard anything, you know? I... They shipped him out pretty damn quick, eh? It was really weird. So I'm not sure what happened with the whole Robert Hike thing, guys. I, I don't got any answers there. Like, I'm, I'm still, like, a little confused by that. Because if you notice when we played them, okay, 
Did you notice how the saber seemed to really show him no respect at all? You know? And Al Hagen, it, it seemed like there was anger between him and some of the players even. So I don't know what the heck that's all about. We'll just, maybe that'll come out eventually. Hopefully I'll hear it on, let's say, uh, Rive and uh, Peters, maybe on their podcast eventually. They might get inside scoop. They get the inside scoops, right? So maybe they'll have an inside scoop to that because I got to get up to date on that. I'm way behind my podcast over there and I love that show. It's fun to listen to. So if anybody can tell me why they're not doing videos no more, they're just doing podcasts, please explain that to me because I'm dumbfounded. I lost track of their show and I, I always like to see the show. I don't just want to hear it, but I listen to it, you know? Anyway, let me get back to this. Yes, Tuck absolutely was a blessing in disguise that we didn't see coming because the night of the trade, you guys remember, it looked like we were making this big deal. Remember uh, Kevin Weeks shot out this, this fake trade that he must have felt stupid sending it out after. Remember, it looked like we're doing a deal with Calgary. Next morning I wake up, it's with, it's with, um, and it wasn't with Calgary, it was with Vegas. And then I seen the deal, I'm like, okay. They tossed in Krebs, they didn't, they didn't hold out, that's good, you know? Because I thought they were gonna hold out to the very end, Vegas. And Vegas is weak up the middle, guys, we know that. So, they desperately, need, they desperately needed Jack Eichel, they did. They desperately needed him, you know? And I think right now, if we continue on this path that we're on, like Dave's talking about, the whole attitude change, hey Dave? I mean, everything has changed since that deal, no doubt. And I know we hit a rut, we hit a few ruts, right, since the deal this year, we've seen it. But the team was gelling together already, you know what I mean? That there, there was something going on with the Sabres team that was really healthy and good even before that deal, we knew it. We knew it early in the year, we've seen signs of it. So now it's like, God, I mean, are we gonna just continue to get better and better and better and better? We might, we might. I believe there's gonna be more bumps in the road ahead because it's what, it, what usually happens with young teams is they peak out, take a step back, and then really peak out. So next year, I don't see this as a peak out season. I see this as a sign for next year that we should have a good year. I think the Sabres really should have a good year next year. Uh, how good? I'm hoping 90 something points. I'm gonna be realistic. I'm not gonna throw 100 out there. 96 point season would be nice if we could do that. It depends how we finish. I wanna see the rest of this year before I look at even making those kind of predictions. You know, it's just too easy to screw up. <laughs> so I don't wanna do that right now. I, I, I'm really excited, Dave, where the boys are going, where they're at. I'm happy just where we're at right now, really, actually. I'm excited for these two games because we're not supposed to win the next four. Forget the next two, we're not supposed to win the next four. So we're gonna see what the boys are really made of, eh? We're gonna really see. And I wanna see Tuck, too, have, one, uh, have a big night. I would love nothing more to see Tuck have like two goals, three assists. I'd love to see him have just a, a, a career night would be nice before the season's out. That would kind of top off everything, wouldn't it? If something like that happened, too. I tell you, I, you know, you, you're right, Kevin Adams knocked it out of the park. How many channels said there's no way to win that trade. You're trading Jack Eichel. There's absolutely no way the Sabres can win that trade. I'm not gonna say we won the trade, but we sure as hell didn't lose it. Not yet, that's for sure. And I don't think, I think this is gonna break down historically as the years pass on as just a good hockey trade that both sides benefited, you know? except we got a hell of a lot of leadership back and they didn't. They got more of the high-end talent, we got way more of the leadership back. And that for me, guys, is gold. It is. That's what this team has lacked for how long? How long can we say since we've lacked leadership on this team? A long time, eh? So we got it now. Krebs is a stud, I think. His, his points look, you look at his points, you're like, well, his points aren't that good. Well, he's a rookie, <laughs> you know, he's a rookie. But his instincts, where to go on the ice are excellent. He just knows where to go. That's, that, uh, I'll tell you what, that Krebs kid, man, he would be somebody I would trust on the ice if we were in a game seven in overtime in a playoff series. I'd have Krebs on the ice. 
I'd have, even as a rookie right now, I'd have him on the ice. That's what I think of Peyton Krebs. And for me, that says a lot because I, I wouldn't be nervous, you know, whereas some other guys would be a little more hesitant, but not him. No, no, he just knows where to go, what to do, it seems. And you know what? They're all going to get better. This is the great story of all this. They're going to get better, these guys. And Krebs is going to get better. Um, Tuck is going to be, I think, a more vital point even next year of our team. So let's leave it there, guys. I'm blabbing now. I, I could go on all day about the Sabres if you get me started, so I'm going to stop there. i got to get these up to you, and I'll see you tonight in the postgame. Let's hope the boys get it done. See you then.